What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about carb cravings on low carb diets and intermittent fasting. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. Go flex in the comments, come on, let's see your flex. So this study was really, really interesting and I thought the authors did a really great job with their takeaways and their honest assessments of the limitations of their study, which I always enjoy when authors are super honest about that. So this study was examining people who either did what they called no diet or did a low carb diet with or without intermittent fasting. They recruited people and if they were on a low carb diet, obviously they went in the low carb diet group. If they just did intermittent fasting, they excluded them. But if they did low carb and intermittent fasting, they still included them and did a sub-analysis for the intermittent fasting people. Now, what did they test? Well, they were looking at a bunch of different questionnaires, examining their beliefs around food, their cravings, the inclination for them to binge eat, if they had any inclinations toward eating disorders, those sorts of things. And they excluded people who had already been diagnosed with eating disorders. They had almost 700 people in this study of the participants in the low carb diet group. 85% were women. Of the participants in the low carb diet group who also did intermittent fasting, 98% were women and the vast majority of them had normal BMI and normal body weight. This just highlights how much emphasis society puts on women's bodies and how women feel pressure to look a certain way. I'm not absolving personal responsibility or anything like that. That certainly comes into play, but I have met very few women in my lifetime, just speaking from anecdote, who weren't either on a diet considering a diet or felt like they should be doing a diet. I think I could say that that covers about 99% of the women I've ever met in my life and I imagine a lot of people's experiences are similar. And when you ask women, hey, when was the first time you thought about going on a diet or somebody told you you should go on a diet? You'll get things like, I was five, I was eight, I was six. That is so upsetting and quite frankly, disgusting to me. And it's something that we as a society as a whole really need to improve. So the first thing they assessed was the probable presence of binge eating disorder. They did that through an assessment called the binge eating scale. Basically under 17, there's no incidence of binge eating. From 17 to 27, there's moderate binge eating and above 27 is basically full bone binge eating disorder. So the binge eating score on average in the low carb group was a 16. The binge eating score in the no diet group was a 10, a significant difference. Now of the low carb diet group, almost 40%, 39% had significant levels of binge eating. Compare that to the no diet group, which was only 13%. Three times more people in the low carb group had significant levels of binge eating. They also assessed these people for their risk of developing an eating disorder. They looked at scores of cognitive restraint as well as food cravings. Once again, they found significantly greater levels of cognitive restraint in the low carb group, as well as significantly higher levels of food cravings in the low carb group. In relation to the types of foods they tended to binge on, it was things like bread and pasta in the low carb group. Interestingly, those were the exact same foods they identified as using cognitive restraint to avoid. So let's tie this in a little bit. The very foods that many are attempting to avoid are what they're end up binge eating on. Keep that in mind, we're gonna come back to that. They also found higher levels of food cravings for things like chocolate. Now, what's interesting is they also found that when they did a sub-analysis of low-carb dieters who also did intermittent fasting, they saw an even greater risk of binge eating behavior. These authors did such a great job in the discussion putting down really pertinent points. I'm literally gonna read you lines out of the discussion because I think it's that good. Although low carb diet appears to be a successful way to lower body weight, our data reveal that this restrictive diet is related to worse eating attitudes. Specifically, they reported higher binge eating symptoms, cognitive restriction, and food cravings. Furthermore, individuals with disordered eating attitudes tend to disregard context, 
frequency, and quantity of food and their attunement with the current state of the body, making choices based on established beliefs. This diet mentality is described in one of the questions of the adapted subscale of cognitive restriction towards carbohydrates. I do not eat some food, i.e. a source of carbohydrates, because they make me fat. This is so important right here. This is one of the opening paragraphs of the discussion and it's so important. When you make hard food rules, you have unintended consequences. Don't eat carbs, they make you fat. Don't eat this food, it makes you fat. Don't eat this food, it's toxic. And here's what happens. Notice how the exact foods that they were trying to avoid were the same foods they ended up binging on. That is so important to understand how that apparently dichotomous relationship develops, whereby I am not going to eat this food because it's bad with no context or consideration given to the quantity of the food you're consuming. I'm not gonna eat this food because it's bad, but then I end up eating a crap load of the food by binging on it. In fact, years ago, I was going to do a debate about flexible dieting versus quote unquote clean eating versus a bro bodybuilder. He later backed out of the debate, which was a good move for him. The debate topic was whether or not flexible dieting was as good as clean eating for getting ready for a bodybuilding show or getting lean. And my opening line of the debate was I had gone to this guy's Facebook and Instagram and he would always post his cheat meal or his cheat day. And I took screenshots of it and approximated the calories that he was consuming from his cheat meals in terms of the junk calories or unclean food. And I was gonna compare that to what I ate just simply including the foods that I liked in moderate quantities. He was eating significantly more calories from junk food than I was, even though I included junk food as part of my diet. He would only do it when he was having a binge, which he called a cheat meal or cheat day. So by trying to avoid these foods, you may actually end up consuming more of these foods than you ever did beforehand by creating this black and white perception of food as either good or bad. I think that this paragraph from the authors, super important. For low carb dieters, the anticipation of relief from negative states and feelings was greater, indicating the possible use of food to deal with emotions. Again, something that I've observed personally with many of the clients I've worked with. And then they put this in. These results indicate that restrictive dietary attitude towards food, particularly carbohydrate consumption, suppress facets of positive reinforcement and responsiveness for cues that may trigger food cravings with a consequent rise of guilt, which positively correlates with cognitive restraint towards carbohydrates. One possible mechanism by which guilt is associated with cognitive restraint in low carb dieters is the role of this practice as a form of social representativeness and shared beliefs about food and health that are endorsed by this group. This idea that I don't eat carbs and I belong to this group that doesn't eat carbs and this is part of my identity of what I do. So when they do binge eat, when they do consume carbohydrate, the feelings of guilt are even more intense because it is part of their identity. Additionally, nutritionism, the tendency to systematize and excessively focus on nutrients instead of food and disturbing patterns concerning pure food consumption may increase with a focus on the quality of the diet as an additional combo of dietary rules. In that scenario, individuals who struggle to stay on the diet when episodes of overeating or binge eating occur might experience increased guilt for seeing themselves as incapable of following the lifestyle resulting in a greater sense of isolation and self-judgment. The group that associated low carb with fasting reported higher binge eating and food cravings compared to those who only remained on a diet. The more food rules you make, the more likely you are to experience shame, guilt, and beat yourself up after you break those rules. So what is the difference? Like, like how should I, are you saying don't do a low carb diet? No, 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 no. If you do a low carb diet or intermittent fasting, what I'm saying is you do it with the understanding that this is a form of dietary restriction I am choosing because it feels easier and more sustainable for me. But I'm not doing it because I believe carbohydrates point blank make you fat. If you go in with that black and white mentality, if you go with the mentality of these 
things are toxic and they're going to do X, Y, Z to you. And again, you're not considering dosage or quantity or anything like that or any kind of context. You are setting yourself up for disordered eating. And you know what? No matter what toxic stuff might be in your diet, no matter what foods might make you fat, probably still healthier than having an eating disorder. Which, oh, by the way, eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental health disorder. I'll say it again. They have the highest mortality rate of any mental health disorder, higher than depression. But nobody wants to talk about that, especially in this industry, because the entire industry is built around trying to shame you into food rules, because then if we can get you afraid, we can sell you more things. Do not stand for this crap anymore. I'll leave you with this. When combined with intermittent fasting, low carb diet increased binge eating and food craving symptoms, especially those related to self-control and guilt. This is a recipe for disaster. I'm not saying not to do low carb diet. I'm not saying not to do intermittent fasting. Not everyone has those sorts of outcomes, but you need to understand why the diet works. Intermittent fasting doesn't work because you must go 20 hours without eating to enter autophagy mode where the autophagy cellular rhino gobbles up all your fat cells. Like that's not, that's not how it works. You eat less, you consume less calories and so you lose weight, great. So if you eat outside your feeding window, no big deal. Just make sure you don't overconsume calories for the day. But if you believe that the fasting portion of it is a rule and absolutely critical, guess what happens if you just eat a little bit of food outside your feeding window? You go on an all out blitzkrieg of food because well, I already screwed it up, so might as well just have whatever I want. If you believe carbohydrates make you fat, regardless of quantity, if you just have a little bit of carbohydrate, boom, might as well just eat all the junk food I want rich in carbohydrates because I've already screwed up the diet. These food rules create all kinds of mental problems. Now, I do have one criticism of the study. My biggest criticism is they compare no diet to a low carb diet or intermittent fasting. Ideally, I'd love to see the same study redone, but comparing people who simply were practicing portion control and healthy eating behaviors or calorie restriction compared to people on low carb or intermittent fasting. Because I think that's important because this could just be a calorie restriction effect, although I don't think it is, but we don't know because of the way the study was designed, but it was still a really good study with really interesting outcomes, and I felt like the researchers' takeaways and how they wrote it was fantastic. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you're somebody who is struggling with binge eating or any kind of eating disorder, please get help. Reach out for help. You're worth being well. Catch you next week.